Practically everyone who's walked into a supermarket has seen the famous sun-made girl smiling on the shelves. But have you ever wondered where she came from or if she was based on a real person? The sun-made girl traces her beginnings to California's great San Joaquin Valley, home of vast vineyards ever since the early 1870s. A combination of rich soils and warm, cloudless weather make the valley an ideal place to grow grapes, harvest them, and spread them in the sunlight, producing the best quality raisins available anywhere. Farmers in the area recognized the valley's raisin potential very early and realized that establishing a strong worldwide sales and marketing organization would bring the greatest benefits to both producers and consumers. And for these reasons, they founded the California Associated Raisin Company in 1912. With the new company in place, it was necessary to establish a strong, recognizable brand name. One day in 1914, the advertising director, E.A. Berg, had an inspiration. Since raisins were made by drying grapes in the sun, what about calling them sun-made? And expanding on that theme by associating them with a pretty girl called the Sun Maid. The idea caught on fast, and soon the company rolled out the first raisin boxes featuring the new name and symbol. To help promote the Sunmade brand, the company opened a booth at the Panama Pacific International Exposition. Staged at San Francisco in 1915, this huge World's Fair celebrated the rebirth of the city after the disastrous earthquake and fire of 1906. The exposition featured hundreds of buildings, beautifully landscaped grounds, and plazas and fountains everywhere. When illuminated at night, it was visible for miles around. Assisting in the great raisin promotion were a number of sun maids, dressed in outfits similar to those worn at that time by the women who worked in the company's Fresno plant. The sun maids wore long white dresses with dark blue bonnets and neckerchiefs. They went around the fairgrounds, passing out raisins to the visitors, and even flew above the vast complex in airplanes, scattering raisin rainfalls over the crowds. One of the sun maids was a 22-year-old Fresno woman named Lorraine Collette. Her father and brother were employees of the company. One weekend found her back home in Fresno, taking a short break from her duties at the San Francisco Exposition. It was a Sunday morning, and my mother had just finished washing and setting my hair. She always counted as she made eight long black curls that hung down. While waiting for them to dry, I put on a red sunbonnet. In the meantime, Leroy Payne, a manager for the company, stopped by the Colette home. He was immediately impressed by the contrast of Lorraine's dark hair against the sunlight and the different color bonnet. Not only did we wear red sunbonnets for the remainder of the fair, but I was asked to pose for a trademark when I returned to San Francisco. My mother had rented an apartment there. Every morning, I would show up at a woman's art studio on Post Street. I would sit till about noon when I had to leave for my work at the fair, and this went on for a couple of weeks. The result was the sun-made girl as we know her today, wearing a bright red bonnet and neckerchief holding a tray of green grapes with a bright sunburst in the background. In addition to the exposition, Lorraine portrayed the new, improved sun-made girl at the Raisin Day festivities, which were regularly held in Fresno until the 1930s. Accompanied by a number of other women also wearing the costume, she was seen in a Raisin Day parade float topped by a gigantic raisin box, where she repeated the pose that was now becoming world famous. One measure of the character's great success was that in 1922, the company officially changed its name to Sunmade Raisin Growers of California. Lorraine worked well into her 80s, running businesses that included a cattle ranch, a cafeteria, and a rest home. She continued to make appearances in the trademark costume and eventually presented the original painting made in San Francisco and the bonnet she wore in it to Sunmade. She even appeared on the Mike Douglas television talk show in 1976, acquainting a new generation with her story. And four years later, Sunmade helped her celebrate her 87th birthday in high style. Lorraine Colette Peterson passed away in Fresno on March 30, 1983. Her story is important not just to Sunmade's history, but also to that of American popular culture. In recognition of this, Sunmade donated Lorraine's original bonnet to the Smithsonian Institution in 1988. And even if the Sunmade girl has changed a bit over the years, to maintain a fresh contemporary appearance, 
it's safe to say that Lorraine Colette Peterson's image has proven to be not only enduring, but truly timeless.